Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of CNC Productions. And today we are going to be drawing the strange thick-nosed lizard, Pachyrhinosaurus. But before we do, we're going to learn a little bit about the Pachyrhinosaurus. Even though it didn't have the elaborate horns of some ceratopsians like Ineosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus has become a favorite among ceratopsian dinosaur enthusiasts because of the large bony growth called a boss that is present at the top of its snout. A second, smaller boss was also present over the eyes and is sometimes close to the nasal boss. Pachyrhinosaurus still possess some small horns, particularly around the edges of the frill. Some of these characteristics are shared amongst the Pachyrhinosaurus species, while some are just unique to one species. The first Pachyrhinosaurus fossils were actually discovered way back in 1880, but they didn't get the attention that they deserved until the late 1940s, which would result in the establishment of the type species in 1950. The most significant discovery relating to Pachyrhinosaurus, however, was the excavation of the Pipestone Creek bone bed in the late 80s, originally discovered by Al Lucusta in 1972, which ultimately yielded 3,500 Pachyrhinosaurus bones, as well as 14 skulls. These bones represent individuals of all ages, from fully grown adults to juveniles, suggesting that ceratopsians like Pachyrhinosaurus moved around in herds, possibly as a protection against large Tyrannosaurid predators like Albertosaurus. The largest Pachyrhinosaurus species were 26 feet long and weighed about 4 tons. They were herbivorous and possessed strong cheek teeth to help them chew tough, fibrous plants. Alright, and now that we've learned a little bit about the Pachyrhinosaurus, let's get to drawing it. Alright, now the first thing you're going to want to do with the Pachyrhinosaurus is to start with the beak. And this will just give you just kind of a baseline, just like that. Right, and then just kind of make a slight dimple in the skull for where the nasal boss will go. Right, then draw another one. Then head back, and that's going to start the frill. And then just make that semi-jacket edge, just like that. And then kind of go in for whenever the frill stops. And the cheek, cheek, um, cheek horn, sorry. And there you go. All right, now that's the basic frill shape. Um, just to kind of separate where the frill starts, just kind of make a sort of like a line right there just to kind of distinguish. Okay, just like this. And then small lines over here for like bony ridges, just kind of make a crisscross because those are the hollow areas of the frill, and then just add bony ridges all along the edges, like that. Outline for the beak. Then draw the eye. Alright, and Ceratopsians usually had kind of big nostrils, so make sure you make it look more rounder and wider. All right, just add some smaller details. Make sure you add the nasal boss around up right above the eye, just like that. And then add the larger one. And you can make it look as big or as crazy, as jagged as you want to. I'm just going somewhere kind of in the middle. Okay, also make sure that you add the horn frills, all right? And there were one, two small ones like that, and then two more that went up and over like this. Just like that. And you can add some kind of along the top of the frill there, even if you can't see them all that well. Alright, and then you start the body once you just kind of add just a, some more rougher details around the face, some scales. Nothing too major. Alright, then you start the neck. Draw the arching back, the leg, okay, and most ceratopsians have this kind of elephantine body shape. As well as a short, straight tail, so make sure that you add that as well. Okay, erase any mistakes. Okay, that's your basic body, and now you start to draw the smaller details. Okay, 
like uh, musculature, folds in the skin. Okay. You just continue to add small details to just kind of make your drawing look more lifelike. It doesn't have to be too crazy, but the more detail you add, the better your drawing will look. And if you even want to, you can even draw like crisscross marks or scars, whatever you feel like drawing. Just make sure that if there's any sort of wide areas of open space that you just kind of patch them over with some uh, muscle details or scale details or anything like that. Okay, and now we can finish off with some spines. And a lot of people think that some Ceratopsians had tall quills on their um, tails, so I'm going to draw that with this don't have to add these if you don't want to, but it makes it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, just like that. That just kind of adds a little bit of uniqueness. Okay. Tell you what, I'm gonna just kind of extend the back of it here back a little bit taller. Okay, redraw the quills, there we go. Now it looks a little bit stockier. Alright, and that's your basic outline for the Pachyrhinosaurus, and now we can get to coloring it in. Alright, and the colors that we're going to use for this drawing are brown, like a dark brown, black, uh, deep blue, gray, dark purple or navy color, light brown, and orange. And start with, the orange won't be a major part of this drawing, it will just be sort of around the eye, just like that. Alright, and the gray will take up a slightly larger portion of the drawing, color in the beak, the nasal boss, and the eye bosses. Color in the horns. Okay, and then just kind of lightly color in the feet or the bottoms of the legs gray. Alright, and now for black. And black will take up a larger portion of this drawing color in stripes all along the creature and you can just color in just black surrounding the eye like this in sort of a teardrop shape as well as stripes radiating out from the center of the frill just like this and in the center okay and continue to draw these stripes all around the creature and then draw more stripes up and down the legs. All right, and now you will want to take the dark, um, dark purplish color, fill in the holes in the middle of the frill, and then towards the eye and face area down in this area. And if you need to, you could also use a black 
to just kind of distinguish the nasal boss above the eye just a bit. Okay, yeah, make the purple around the face sort of like a teardrop surrounding the teardrop around the eye, if that makes sense. And that's all that you need that purple for, and then the rest, um, you're going to take the dark blue for the rest of the face. The rest of the face, the head, and the frill. It's just this dark blue color. Okay, and then also the final, like the tip of the tail, you can color in blue as well. Just like that. Okay, and then take the light brown, and then kind of go over whatever area isn't striped in, so more along the underbelly. And then sort of over the top, just to kind of give it a sort of weathered look. And then you take the dark brown, and you fill in the rest of the creature. And there you go. Your finished Pachyrhinosaurus. Now you can color in your Pachyrhinosaurus any way that you'd like. This is just a suggestion. Uh, if you guys would like to see any other dinosaurs drawn on my channel, then simply leave a comment and I will go ahead and make a dinosaur drawing of it. If you guys enjoyed the video, then leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.